Today I wanted to talk with everybody about a saw that was given to me by a friend of mine named Nick Stowell. He makes these buck saws and he asked me if I would use it for a bit and tell him what I think about it. So I'm out all the time as you know and um, I got this saw about a month and a half ago. So I really didn't want to jump the gun too quick and do a video because I really wanted to give this thing a fair shake and really put it through the ringer. And, be able to share with everybody you know what I truly think about this saw so let's just talk about the overall um, specs of this saw itself so the saw is 25 inches overall length it's one foot high okay it has a what do we got on here a 24 inch blade and this came with the dry wood blade he gives you both options for blades so this is a dry wood blade and this is made of elm okay red elm so uh, the cool thing with these buck saws is that they break down. So they break down very, very simple. You take off your tensioning device, which is just paracord and of course your tensioner piece. So you have that, you can put that off to the side. You can take out your center point, I'll try to do this so you guys can see how we do this. This center point just slides right out as a good fit in that. And then the handles fold back on the blade itself. Okay, so. All you do is you take your blade and then, of course, slide it in there. Whoop. Just like this. And you can see that fits really, really well. You could slide it inside a pack and it takes up very little room. And then to put it back together, of course, open it up. Fit it back together. Take your tensioning string and put it across the top. There's two notches on this top section for that string to actually fit in. And then all that you do is start to twist this tensioner and give a tension. Now, one thing I will say, I don't wanna to get too much into how to use a saw, but you don't need to put extreme tension on this. You want just enough that it's holding tight. Once you start cutting, you'll see um, if you add, need to add more tension or not on this. So uh, he has brass screws on the bottom here that hold the blade in and um, it's very, very balanced. It's very light, it's very balanced, and it works really, really well. And like I said, I've been using this saw for a while, and um, there's not too much I could say negative about it. What I can say is a lot of people say, well, you don't have a lot of depth here, and that is true. So this saw is truly made more for cutting smaller type saplings, and I'm gonna say three to four inch trees and saplings is really where this saw is gonna perform best, um, bucking up some smaller wood, things like that. Now, there's argument, we'll use a bow saw, you can get more depth, but here's a bow saw with an 18 inch blade on it. And um, you could see you don't get much more depth down into a piece of wood. So, um, you know, it works out really well. I like the packability of it. Now, I had a bunch of different people use this. We use this in all kinds of conditions. I actually have had this thing outside since I got it. No cover, nothing, I just left it out. And I really wanted to see, um, you know, how this holds up with weather. And so far, it's holding up real good. I haven't put any oil on this. The blade, I um, did oil the blade a few times just to keep from getting too rusty. But um, it's working out really, really well. Now, the couple people that used it and myself, the only thing I can say that um, people had questions on was the kerf of where the saw blade fits in. I guess that's what we would call it, okay? Um, is a little bit wider than some people might like, okay? So what I can say about that is when inexperienced people who don't use a saw a lot, and yes, there is technique to using a saw, were using this, they were cutting and the saw blade was twisting. So they were cutting crooked and they were cutting all kind of crazy shapes rather than straight. And I couldn't really understand why they were doing that at first. And um, then I was thinking about it, I thought, well, I think that kerf is a little bit wider than um, maybe it needs to be. But I haven't had that problem. The only time I ran into that problem was I was cutting about a 15 inch tree, green wood. It was wet, it was muddy, it was pouring down rain, I was tired, and I was just not running the saw the way I should have been and I was getting some twist in the blade. So um, I don't wanna say that's even a downfall though because a lot of individuals that that's gonna to happen to need to just learn to let the saw do the cutting and you're just adding the motion to it. You don't have to add pressure to a saw, the saw should cut itself. Um, so if you did have that problem ever with any type of saw, I'm not saying this one specific, you can take a small washer, add that in and that'll take some of the play out um, of the blade. 
but again, it's more user error in that case. What I do like about that little bit bigger of a kerf though, and I have done this already with this saw, is I added my Greenwood blade in here, folded it all up, and I didn't have an extra blade to contend with to slide it into my bag that I was carrying. So both blades were attached here when I got to camp, put the blade in that I needed, left the other blade out, and then when I was gonna pack back up, put both blades in. So that's a good option for that. But again, if you know how to use this properly and you take your time and um, cut the proper way, there's no issue. So overall, I would definitely say this is something to look into. I'm gonna add uh, Nick's info down below in the description box. So if you wanna contact him, he's a really good guy to work with, all different types of wood he uses. You can talk to him about different blades if you're not 100% sure on what type of blade you wanna go with. And um, he also sells bags and pouches that you can put these things in, kits. So there's all kinds of stuff you can talk to him about. So I want to thank him for sending this out to me. I love this thing. It's staying at my yurt now. I'm going to actually put some boiled linseed oil on this now and uh, start to take a little bit better care of it. I always like to, when I get things to try out, I always like to really you know, put them through, through the ringer and also almost weatherize them in a sense. Not that that's always a good thing, but I want to see how it holds up to the weather. If it can hold up to um, all different weather conditions and not split out and crack or anything like that, it's good for me. So very traditional looking, great tool, great for every woodsman to have. So uh, check it out and get a hold of Nick, he'll hook you up. Um, tell him I sent you over. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's it. So this was Dan Wolak with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. Got a lot more stuff in the works. And until next video, stay in the woods, guys.